Hi there, being a world famous travel YouTuber, sorry, I'm being sarcastic, I'm in and out of London Heathrow Airport all the time. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to review my go-to on-site airport hotel. Now it's only fair I do this after I dissed the Terminal 3 Airtel in my last video. So today we are visiting the London Heathrow Airport on-site transit hotel in Terminal 2, the Heathrow Hilton Garden. Located next to Terminal 2, this is virtually a brand new hotel, built in 2019. It features 369 rooms and suites, over 13 floors. The hotel has an in-house restaurant, two bars and a fitness centre, and the hotel is rated at four stars. Unlike most hotels at Heathrow Airport, which are located off the airport site and need a 20 minute bus or taxi transfer to reach, the Hilton Garden is located in the central Terminal 23 hub. It is one of the two transit hotels in the central hub, the other being the Terminal 3 Air Hotel. You can watch, if you want, my not particularly complimentary review of this hotel on the link I've provided. There are also separate hotels on site at Terminal 4 and Terminal 5. Enough intro, let's get boots onto the ground and go and tour this hotel. So firstly, looking at getting to the hotel. Unlike the Terminal 3 Air Hotel, which is right next to the customs exit in T3 arrivals, getting to the Hilton will, will require a bit of legwork, but not much. I arrived in Terminal 3 from JFK New York and it took me about 15 minutes to get to the hotel once I'd cleared customs. This is a very shortened visualisation of that route. There is a network of subterranean walkways under Heathrow, and this route applies if you are arriving by Heathrow Express train or from another terminal. Just follow the signs for Terminal 2. You'll almost certainly need to take a elevator up to level 1 arrivals. At Terminal 2 arrivals, stay outside on the external concourse and then follow signs for either the hotel itself or Car Park 2. Strangely enough, the closer you get to the hotel, the better the signage gets. You will need to cut through Car Park 2 Valley Parking Area where you will locate the Hilton Pedestrian Skywalk. Follow the skywalk about 50 to 80 metres and you'll find the lobby entrance. And here we are in the lobby. As you can see, it's quite spacious with numerous comfortable seating areas, an ATM and a concession. My check-in was efficient and the customer service was absolutely excellent, completely unlike the T3 Aerotel. Well, by a strange quirk of fate, I found myself back at London Heathrow Airport in another transit hotel, staying for the night. And the reason for that is I've just had a long, tiresome journey from New York JFK. I've arrived much later than I was expecting on a Sunday night, and I really can't face the transit onwards to get to my home address, which would get me home really early in the morning. So we're gonna stay here, um, at London Heathrow Airport on site again. So if you've watched my other video on the Aerotel Transit Hotel at Heathrow, you'll see that I wasn't too impressed with that. So this is the second transit hotel, the Hilton. Big point here is the transit hotels are both situated on the airport site. The mainstream hotels, which there are a number, are situated along the A4 and you need to get a bus to get to those or a taxi. This one you can walk straight into from the arrivals hall. So, having looked at the air hotel, this is now the, the Hilton Garden Hotel Terminal 2. It is a transit hotel, so temper your judgment with that. You're not gonna find a lot of facilities on a transit hotel that you would find at a mainstream hotel. It is run by the Hilton Group, so I'm expecting better things than the air hotel, but quick, point to make to you if you're watching this video and you're coming from abroad and you want somewhere to stay having arrived at Heathrow and you're transiting on to another country using the Heathrow hub then this hotel's not for you unless you want to go through passport control this is not an airside transit hotel it's off security so you need to go through passport and customs to get to the hotel so that's a bit of a dissuader for people who are in transit you can still do it, there's nothing to stop you coming through the UK border unless you don't have a visa that would allow you to do so. But we digress. 
So how does this hotel compare to the Air Hotel? I and mean, they're very similar, only three, 400 meters apart. And uh, are the facilities better? So what we'll do with this review is, since we're in my room now, we'll do a room review. And then we'll go for a wander around and look at the facilities and finally have a beer in the bar before it closes. Yes, unlike the Air Hotel, this actually has a proper bar, which is music to my ears after seven hours on an aircraft over the Atlantic. So let's start with the Richard Tour and let's go. My room is a standard king room in the Hilton Garden. The first point I want to make is the size of it. This is a trans hotel, but the rooms are quite spacious and not that dissimilar from mainstream Hilton hotel rooms. For entertainment, you're provided with a 40 inch LCD TV with UK cable channels and some international channels. You get the standard rudimentary hotel coffee making facilities and a work desk. You also get high speed Wi-Fi, which is absolutely excellent. You also have a refrigerator for drinks. I'm not sure that's much use in a transit hotel, but I'm not complaining. There's also a coffee table and an armchair. There is no storage in the room per se, but you do get an area for your luggage, which is adequate. The bed I can confirm is firm, but comfortable. No complaints there. And next to the bed is a small hotel safe for your valuables. You're right next to a busy runway, but you can rest assured that the room is completely soundproof, so you won't hear a thing. Unlike the Terminal 3 Air Hotel, you do get a window, and you could actually pay extra for high room with a runway view. But my view is sadly of the T2 car park. If the rooms themselves are similar to standard sized Hilton hotel rooms, then the bathrooms certainly are not. This isn't a complaint. This is a transit hotel, remember? But you get a shower cubicle, a toilet, and a sink, and that's it. If you're a couple, then you're gonna to need to take turns using the bathroom because both of you will struggle to fit in here. In fact, I've had it hard to film in here on my own, hence uh, the poor standard of footage for the bathroom. So that's the hotel room to a dumb. Well, now for my standard hotel routine, which is to go for a beer. So I'm gonna need an elevator down to level one. The Hilton Garden has two bars. On level one is the apron bar, which is the main bar of the hotel and serves as a standard lobby bar that you find in most hotels. However, a bonus is that on level 30 is the runway bar. This is a high-end bar with scenic views across the whole runway. For residents, it's free, but if you are a non-resident, you have to pay a 35 pound cover charge to enter the bar. It is expensive, but it's high-end and gives great views across the old airport. Now, I love places like this, and I'm disappointed it was closed on my visit, but it was a Sunday and it was quite late, and maybe next time. So, by default, we're going to visit the Apron Bar at Level 1. The Apron Bar is modern, spacious, well-lit, and with a, quite a good nighttime view. There's seating for about 50 people in the bar, and the customer service was absolutely excellent. The drink prices, yeah, expensive, but pretty much central London prices. Now, my only complaint is the bar closed at 10 p.m. Okay, it's a Sunday, but this is a 24 hour international airport. Really, midnight, 1 a.m. would be more suitable.
Well, it's now 8am Monday morning at Heathrow and the start of a brand new week. So here's a view from my room in daylight. Before I check out, head off into central London, time for some breakfast in the Apron restaurant on level one. I took a bed and breakfast rate when I booked the room, but if you want to pay separately for breakfast, it's about £16 per person or 20 US dollars in this hotel. Which I think is very reasonable for London and you'll certainly pay a lot more elsewhere in Heathrow. There's seating for over 100 people, but as you can see, the restaurant is very quiet, especially considering it's peak breakfast time in hotels at 8.30am. The breakfast on offer in the Apron restaurant is a buffet of cooked full English staples and cold continental breads, cheeses, meats and cereals. Fairly standard fare for any Hilton around the world. And I have absolutely no complaints, it was delicious. Okay, it's that point in the video where I put up the cost of everything. Remember, the prices in the Hilton Heathrow will vary quite significantly depending on the season and the level of demand. This hotel is popular and will fill up quickly. So if you want to guarantee a place, you need to book well in advance. The spot rate for my room, the Standard King, is £132. But because I booked through Booking.com, I managed to get it cheaper than that and I paid £122 or 165 US dollars. You can see the spot rates for the other rooms. I'm not gonna read them all off. Uh, you can look them up yourself. Point to make here is the standard rooms are significantly cheaper than the Airtel in Terminal 3, which provides much, much worse service and quality of hotel than Hilton. Well, that's the Hilton Garden at Terminal 2 reviewed and walked round. What do I think of it? It's definitely the better of the two uh, on-site Trans hotels at Heathrow Airport, vastly better to the Aurora. And it's cheaper as well, by about £30 a night. Can't really fault it. Uh, what was surprising was the restaurant and the breakfast, absolutely fantastic. Um, and not that expensive, really. Uh, it's £25 usually for breakfast in hotels like this. And this was half that. So, um, yeah, I recommend the Hilton if you're transiting through Heathrow. There are still cheaper options if you want to go on to the A4, the main hotel rooms there are about half the price of the on-site trans hotels, and they're much bigger hotels. The downside is you'll have to get the Heathrow Transit bus to come in, and if you're rushing around in the morning, it's a pain that you don't really need, particularly if you've got luggage. Okay, that's us finished uh, Heathrow, and let's move on to our next adventure.